All right. So I'm going to make just a little sweet dessert drink known as a liquefied ghost. Oh, the Ghostbusters ghost? <laughs> so I got to wrangle a ghost and put it in the blender. Uh, in the meantime, Andrew, you want to start? Of course. All right, so I'm just going to read off my list. <laughs> okay, so I, I watched Altered States again. Uh, I, I've been finding this month I've kind of not been gravitating towards strictly horror, just kind of loosely horror for a lot of movies I've been seeing. But Altered States, a Ken Russell film uh, that I've loved for a number of years, in part because there was a time when uh, my computer broke down and the only way I could watch movies was to watch VHSs. I had maybe five VHSs and one of them was Altered States. And so I've seen it, you know, maybe 50 plus times. And uh, it was it was really good um, watching it again. Mm -hmm. I still think it's really underrated, but I can't really say much more well, about it. What's the synopsis other... of the story? Okay, then? so um, uh, William Hurt is this guy who is a really eccentric scientist, and uh, he finds this drug in the middle of South America, and uh, it invokes a common experience. Hmm. It's a hallucinogenic kind of like peyote or something like that, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he begins to take the drug, you know, like almost daily, and he goes into this isolation tank and takes it and just freaks out, trips out, and uh, then he begins regressing in evolution. So he becomes more and more monkey-like. Interesting. Uh, as he takes more of the drug. And then he eventually evolves into the first organism. Really? And then things happen. There's a lot of religious symbolism in there. That's interesting. It is a really, really good movie. It's strange, but... Huh. Uh, I also watched the new Amityville movie. Oh, yeah, Amityville, how was that? Amityville, The Awakening. Uh, so... I like watching Jennifer Jason Leigh and everything. <laughs> Jennifer Jason Leigh is great. And I'm really glad that after uh, Hateful Eight, her career kind of took off, especially with her in roles as a villain. Um, mm -hmm. And she was kind of a villain in this movie. Huh. Um, so, it, Amityville is just really by the numbers. It's like every other Amityville movie, hmm. except uh, with a kid in a coma. A kid in a coma yeah. this time, and, huh? and so, you know, a ghost possesses him, and he becomes... Active? Semi-conscious, and then uh, starts typing things with his eyes on one of those fancy computers. Interesting. Oh, okay, I coma. see what... Oh, okay, I see Not what Not coma does people, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then he's possessed by the ghost and tries to kill people. And then it turns out the mother's trying to kill people too because she's protecting him and it's weird. It doesn't make much sense. But it's so much more entertaining than any of the Amityville sequels other than the second one. The second one. I was going to say, the second and one is pretty interesting. It's like a slight twist on the second one. Just a little bit. Except, you know, like, it's modern day, and they know that the Amityville house is haunted. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I watched The New Blair Witch. Um, yeah, what did you think about that one? Well, I saw that one in the theaters, actually. Yeah. Uh, and at the time, I just kind of had nothing to say about it, because it was, like, time travel. That's yeah. the plot twist. Mm-hmm. And I still love it. Ooh. I'll still watch it, but, you know. Is this our ghost? This is the liquefied ghost. Oh, my. Wow. I should go face the corner. You <laughs> should. So, well, I think we need to cheers. I think we should. Poor ghost full. didn't know what was coming. Oh, that is really good. Mm, yeah. It's very simple. Okay. It's vodka, vanilla syrup, cream, and soda water. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But it looks it looks like a liquid ghost. It, it really does. does. <laughs> it looks well, okay. Well, that reminds me of a movie I saw this <laughs> week. You know, I only saw the first uh, thirty minutes of it. It was a ghost story. Um, Casey Affleck is a was she it ghost. That new oh one? yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, how I saw was the first that? thirty minutes of it. So it's uh, I heard comparisons to Tarkovsky, 
And that huh. made me think of one of two things. Either this movie is gorgeous and weird, or it is utterly pretentious and boring as hell. And I can't tell yet, because it is very pretty, mm -hmm. uh, but it is very slow. And very much a movie that likes to linger on things. Uh, I, I watched 30 minutes of it in case the Affleck had just died and become a sheet ghost and mm -hmm. then kind of went into a portal or something. Uh, but that was the, the setup for the very basic premise. Uh -huh. There was almost no dialogue huh. all the way through that whole thing. It's kind of hard to describe, but, you know, hmm. I, I'll eventually finish it. So then I saw Black Christmas, which I wrote a giant essay about. Did you? Mm -hmm. Nice. Because there's so, so much to go over with that. Is Christmas. that posted somewhere? Just yeah. Facebook? Oh, yeah, it's on Facebook. Okay. But, um, and the big thing is that this movie was made in 1974. Um, to put that into perspective, uh, Friday the 13th was 1980. Okay. And it contains all of the classic American slasher tropes, mm -hmm. except it has much better characters, mm -hmm. a much better sense of humor. Yeah, uh, it's just generally a better movie, oh, enjoy. <laughs> and it's from 74. It looks like it was made in the mid-80s. It does, doesn't it? It does. I agree. It really does. And the idea of uh, kind of having the entire backstory for the serial killer mm -hmm. being done in these garbled phone calls, right. it sounds like they come from more than one person, was really amazing and never actually showing the killer outright, mm -hmm. you know? And do you think it's interesting, I mean, not just the way it shot, but it was very ahead of its time in its subject. Oh, extremely. Well, well, it dealt with abortion. It, yeah. You know, you had, um, oh, what was her name? Um, uh, I know she's in here. Yeah. Olivia Hussey. Mm -hmm. uh, Olivia Hussey is pregnant and she wants to get an abortion and her boyfriend doesn't, you know, really doesn't want her to. And so he comes into the picture and becomes the main suspect in all of the murders, uh, because, you know, he kind of goes a little crazy over not wanting her to do this, and, I don't know, it, that adds so much to the character, mm -hmm. way more it than does. it needs to do in a horror movie. But it's so beautiful, and <laughs> it, it just did, makes yeah. Did you ever see the remake? Yeah. Yes, I did. Uh, it was horrible, and I would never watch it. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing, the characters yeah. in Black Christmas are what make it. Yeah. You have yeah. Margot Kidder, who is this really foul-mouthed sorority girl, who's a mm -hmm. senior, and she's getting these little kids drunk as hell. Nice. And, you know, talking about how the little fucker snuck her and yeah. all this stuff. <laughs> and then there's the old disgruntled sorority mother yep. who hides bottles of whiskey everywhere throughout the sorority house. And she is the funniest part in that movie. <clears throat> she is. She has a, a, a bottle of whiskey stuck inside of the toilet bowl. Um, not the bowl, but the tank. The tank, yeah. yeah. She does. Yeah, and uh, so then she's looking through uh, a That's bookcase, beautiful. and she says B for booze, and grabs a book with the letter B, opens it up, and there's another bottle of whiskey, <laughs> and you know, like she just finds them all over the house throughout the movie. Beautiful. And uh, I, I mean, there's even more, uh, huh? But it's, it's a wonderful film, and I think it's, I think it may be one of the most underrated slashers of the seventies, honestly. Is. Brax, you got anything to uh, contribute here? Uh, no, really, just a bunch of names I've never heard of. <laughs> did, did, did you watch anything in the past couple weeks? No, I tried playing some horror games, but generally all kind of lame. They all seem to have this strange time in them where it's just a lot of walking. and. Well, what, like, what'd you play? Uh, I tried playing Soma again. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It starts off nice, and then they throw you into like this underwater, almost kind of bioshock sort of area, but it's just you walking on the sea level. Hmm. Hmm. Trying to find your damn way. Thank you, sir. And when you do find your own way, you're kind of just lost as to why you're even down there. Hmm. So then I tried playing another game. I'm trying to remember what it is because it's some weird Cthulian word. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Something but, semi Lovecraftian. Yeah, it's definitely Lovecraftian. <laughs> uh, I started getting into that. Just found like this random temple that apparently is involved with that, but I haven't got any further with than that. Have you ever played Eternal Darkness? Uh, it was no. a it was a GameCube exclusive. Yeah, I that's think. why I never played it. 
Oh, so that game was good. so good. I love oh. that game so much. Oh. Yeah, still kind of. You had a nice sanity time. meter in that game. Oh, no. And <laughs> as it depleted, uh, the game would actually mess with you really hard. So It would do really fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, it would like, do stuff like, you know, uh, arms would come out of the walls. Oh, yeah. Um, You'll enter a room thing. and everything will be upside down. Yeah. But the uh, worst what? one, the worst one is where it stops the game and it turns off and back on. And says that your saved data is corrupt. It, it basically it like blue screens what? you. Yeah, it blue screens you. Yeah, That's within some... the game. But, and but, it's but, scary but, but, as hell. Yeah, but but, but the then everything comes every, everything good. comes back, and your character grabs their head, just like what's going on, and then you that regain is... composure and you continue playing. It's yeah. great. That's like some Sonic EXP. It right is there. wonderful. That's yeah. awesome. But I mean, like, think about being oh. uh, young and mm -hmm. a nerd. Yeah. And, you know, playing this game no. and having that happen. Like, save files are precious to you. <laughs> yeah. yes, They're a yes, part they of who are. you are. They're your status with your friends. Especially when you <laughs> go through each thing and you make sure to save at every stop point. This is where I'm at. We should, we should play through that together. That would make a great series. I would. It's a long game, but... Ooh. I love that, that game. That sounds so fun. Yeah. Um... I didn't really have a lot of time to watch anything, but I did get um, Galaxy of Terror from Netflix and watch that. Is it old Roger Corman from 81? Oh, Corman. I love Corman. Oh, Corman. so good. Oh. Corman was good. It was so good. It was like... You can do no wrong. It was, it, it was like this, this crew, this spaceship crew is sent to find another crew that got lost out in space. And they land on this planet, and the planet is alive, and it can sense their fears. It's like it's like an ego were it. Oh, Ooh, how it's like cool! Like the the planet itself was a manifest manifests Whoa. all your fears and it kills you. Well have been ego. That's awesome. <laughs> well, yeah, true. Yeah, <laughs> but In the novels. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So but, it was the sea turtle. But it was so <laughs> cool, and. uh and it had uh, just odd people in it. Like, um, Robert Englund is in this before mm -hmm. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, yeah. So he actually nice. looks human. Mm -hmm. he's, he's actually a pretty good looking guy. Oh, yeah, no. He, he was a good, is very good looking guy. Yeah. Even, actor. I even and yeah, and he was a really good sure. actor. Yeah, Robert Englund's always been great. I, I've always thought it was strange. Well, not strange, unfortunate that after he played Nightmare, it was like, oh, you're a horror movie actor. Now. Yeah, that's all he ever got to do. But yeah, he, he I was really impressed with his performance and he was like the most normal character. Like like if like he 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 seemed like he belonged in the real world, not in the movie world, and that's why he got to live the longest. <laughs> that is really wow. ironic. Yeah. I like that. That is that's pretty cool <laughs> um, though. And then there was one character he didn't last too long, but there's this other character who was played by I don't know the actor's name, but he he played Captain Spaulding in the uh, House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects. Oh, the guy oh, with the beard. Yeah. I know Captain Spaulding. No, you don't. Is it know. Sid Haig? Yes, yes, Sid, Sid Haig. Yeah. Sid Haig is in this too. I, I know. I can see the face. I just don't know the name. <laughs> he's like this. He's in almost every Rose Zombie oh, movie. He's wow. in part. Yeah, he is. Um, he, but he, in this one, he he plays this gruff guy who's. Uh, he refuses to use a gun. Instead, he has dedicated his life to these crystals. They're they're like ninja stars, but huh. he calls them crystals, and he throws them at anything that moves. And then at one point, he uses them to like brace a door, huh. and, the, and and the door force of the door like shatters the crystals, and his life is just ruined. And he's he's oh, he's, he's, like, he's just he's just emotionally dead when the crystals are, are gone oh, no. and that allows his fears to manifest and then the crystals like reform and then kill him wow <laughs> oh. that's pretty cool that's intense yeah huh. it was pretty the weirdest death though has to be giant worm rape like this one girl rape? this girl she like Ooh, like Trevor's a couple meets. of a, a couple of times in the in the movie, she referred to how she hates worms. Mm. And then when, when she's left alone, her fear manifests as this gigantic worm that, like, mounts her, secretes this acid which dissolves all of her clothes, and it has these little nub things that kind of, like, <laughs> hold her in place. What? And then you can actually see the worm start going like this. Ah! No! 
I, I really have to wonder no! what this is a metaphor for. <laughs> I mean, it's so subtle. Yeah, right? I have no idea what that's supposed to represent. Oh my gosh. But it was, the, the movie overall was just a lot of fun to watch. Mm. I really that enjoyed it. It sounds like a fun movie. Oh, it was Roger Corman. Yeah, yeah no that kidding. makes sense. Right? Totally makes sense for him. Definitely. I started describing the plot to Angel and... and for a second, he thought he had seen it, but then he realized he was thinking of Event Horizon. <laughs> oh my god. Interesting. Jenny, what have you seen? Okay, so I'm going to probably just narrow this down to one. Uh, there was this really interesting movie that was on TV not too long ago. It was called The Bride. And it was kind of supposed to be like a rehash of um, The Bride of Frankenstein. But here's the kicker. Frankenstein, like Dr. Frankenstein, was played by Sting from The Police. <laughs> what? And The Bride uh, was played by the chick from Flashdance. Mm. Yeah. And um, this also caught me off guard, which I thought was really cool, was Frankenstein, he was played by the dude that voices Mr. Krabs from Spongebob. <laughs> and it was wonderful <laughs> hearing him do this voice. Is this a newer film or Older. No, it was from the 80s, um, <laughs> and it was really neat. Like, I really enjoyed it. The first part plays out like a straight-out horror movie. Like, it oh, yeah. is like the whole thing like where he's bringing the bride to life, and, well, something goes wrong, and it had this amazing, like, uh, effects. Like, there was a head that he had propped up on a table that started spitting out blood and just shaking violently because it was overpowered by voltage. Like, there was just mass chaos going all around. There was another person that exploded on the wall. And then there was another um, instance where, like, he was using the water to um, help him as, like, a, I don't know, a cooling system or something like that while he was bringing the, the bride back to life. And they just overflowed and bubbled. And it was chaos. But then that's where the only horror of it lies. Like, that's it. That's the only horror part in the movie. The rest of it is a romantic comedy. <laughs> oh. And it wasn't disappointed at all. If anything, it was fun. The, okay, so Frankenstein, it does play out the same way where, like, they burn down the castle, the bride rejects them, and, mm -hmm. you know, basically the same thing. But the bride survives at the end with Dr. Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. And um, Dr. Frankenstein is trying to teach the bride, because he takes a fancy to her, you know, it's trying to teach the bride how to be a young lady, and he wants to make her the epitome of all women, that she could be as equal as man in mental capacity. Let me guess. He tries to have sex with her. At the very end, yeah, but yeah. Wesley, <laughs> Wesley from freaking Prince's Bride tries to get yeah, to her Carrie beforehand. That movie. That's right. And I under, I completely understand. <laughs> I completely understand. Also, apparently the Kurgan from Highlander is in it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. And it is wonderful because then the, like it's a road trip movie after that <laughs> because Frankenstein, he meets this little person <clears throat> and they go off on an adventure together and join a circus. Do we call them midgets? I'm sorry. Not little people. Okay. You've contributed the least, so say something. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Why are horror games so goddamn bad unless they're survival horror? Okay. Just can't make a good psychological horror game. I mean, there's the Amnesia, The Dark Descent, but ever since then, they're just either copycats or not worth it. Did you ever play Machinery for Pigs? No. Okay. It's criticized too much. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so The Bride was a wonderful, underrated movie. If you want to go check it out, I say you really should. Also, why not? It has Wesley and Sting. The fact that Christmas horror movies are a thing and tend to be amazing, at least in my opinion. It kind of says something about, I don't know, the juxtaposition of the horrible, awful things that occur in a slasher film, and Christmas, the most wonderful time of the year. I don't know. I, I find that, that was Halloween. I find that wonderfully effective. Not Halloween. 
Halloween's no, but it's stereotypically. Halloween. Come on now. Oh, okay. No. But yeah, no, Christmas horror forever. All right. Mm-hmm. And Corman can do no wrong. Even when he goes tor- horribly, horribly wrong, he can still do no wrong. <laughs> Has anybody here ever seen Frankenstein Unbound? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> seen it or seen it? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I also forgot to mention in that thing that Frankenstein's Bride and Frankenstein's Monster both had a telepathic, like, telepathic bond with each other. What? 